There is a widespread misunderstanding about the nature of blockchain consensus protocol. Some people think that network members, so-called nodes or miners, seek an agreement on whether to accept each new block or not, and that a 50% majority may decide to make some operational decision. Based on this, there are a whole bunch of fallacies around the problem of 51%. Hi, my name is Alexey Konashevich. You are on blockchain state. Nodes act independently and don't transmit their decisions over the network. Don't get me wrong, they can communicate, but it's not a part of their protocol. Network members don't have to agree their decisions. Each time they create a new block or accept a new one from each other, they do it according to the initial protocol and do not collectively decide whether it is valid. This is a full explanation of this question, but let's unpack it and see how it works. A node has two states of work, active to produce blocks or passive to accept blocks. In both scenarios they build their copy of the chain of blocks or so-called ledger. And in both scenarios, they do it upon the predefined rules. Each node downloads and installs these rules, this protocol from a GitHub or a community website and begins working. These rules are called blockchain consensus protocol. Of course, a node can download other rules or even change them. But it will lead to the node not working in this network. Simple as that. Consensus is not about making decisions collectively. It's a set of algorithms for synchronization of nodes in the network. The rules are there from the beginning, from the genesis block. If a node creates a block per this rule, it disseminates it in the network, among other nodes. A node that has got a new block takes these rules and checks the block against these rules. It's called validation. If the block is non-compliant with the established rules, the node dumps it. If it's compliant, it adds to the chain of its local storage. There is no such thing as the ledger or the database of the network. Every single node in the decentralized blockchain network keeps its independent local version of the ledger which happens to be predominantly the same across the whole network because of synchronization rules. After a node validates a block, it doesn't need to add it to its version of the chain. Remember, all nodes act independently. The node can arbitrarily dump even a valid block. Why? Because it's a competition of who has the longer chain. This is the second fundamental rule of the decentralized blockchain network. Only the longest chain is valid. When the node decides to reject a block, there can be only one valid reason to do this. The node presents an alternative chain to the network, which is the longer than the existing one. The rule works like this. When a node accepts a block or blocks, it compares it with its version of the chain. And if it appears that the new ones constitute the longer version, the node adds these blocks, replacing the shorter version of the chain. Of course, it firstly validates these blocks. Now, what about 51? A node or a pool of nodes can gain a lot of computational resources to produce blocks. If the rest of the network has less computational power, cumulatively, such a majority will produce the blocks faster than the other ones. Such a majority will predominantly present the longer chain of blocks. And it's not against the rules towards the consensus. It's a legitimate behavior of, of the network. Technically being the majority, they can establish some censorship. For example, they will filter or ban some transactions. But it's not illegal towards the consensus. On the contrary, you can look at it from another perspective. It's the majority's decision. 
Hence, it's legitimate, according to the rules. And the final question, can a node accept a non-compliant block? Yes, there are two basic scenarios, a dummy one and a so-called hard fork. In the first one, the node builds its own version of the blockchain and left alone out of the network because each time it shares a block built upon own rules that nobody even knows. Other nodes just dump it as an invalid block. The second is the way to change the initial rules, called a hard fork. Some nodes, not necessarily the majority, can decide to change the rules. In the dummy scenario, for example, if the node decides to create blocks of 4 megabytes instead of 2 megabytes as established in the protocol, it will end up alone building 4 megabyte blocks on its own. But such a node can agree with some nodes to update their protocol and accept 4 megabyte blocks. Remember, the protocol is not something that exists virtually out there. It's an actual program code in the node. It appears when the node downloads it and it never changes itself. Therefore, the operator must change this code locally to accept 4 megabyte blocks in our hypothetical scenario. By the way, it's not totally hypothetical as I followed the events of Bitcoin forks when it moved to a larger block size protocol in 2016-2017. Finally, other nodes that do not proactively accept the new rule operate under the old rules. Technically, the nodes will not know about the new rule and will just keep bumping the new type of blocks. When nodes start producing blocks under the new rules, the network splits. Some nodes start working under the new rules, while others follow the old ones. As a result of the hard fork, we get two new independent networks with the identical transaction history until the moment of the fork. Because, like I said, each node is independent. It doesn't matter if 51% joined the fork or not. They just split. For example, what we know now as Ethereum Classic is the result of a hard fork in 2016. 20% of the nodes left with the original protocol and version of the ledger. Others moved to another version of the ledger which we call Ethereum. So technically the original Ethereum is the classic one. You can see my video about this dramatic split resulting from the so-called the DAO crisis. In this video you will learn that a part of the network can split by applying controversial rules that change the history of transactions. It gave rise some people to say that blockchain is immutable. But the truth is that it's still immutable because it remains in Ethereum Classic. Also, if you want to know more about 51 attacks, you can watch this video. Other than that, that's it. Thanks for staying with me. You know the drill. Hit like, subscribe if you haven't and share it. See you in the next video. When the node decides to reject a block, there can be only one valid reason to do this. To do this, to do this, to do this.